What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I know it's been a while since I posted here on YouTube, but I'm back and it's good to be back. So we're gonna jump straight into this video today. We're gonna talk about mastering your money and putting together a personal budget that actually works for you. A lot of these copy and paste budgets don't necessarily work for everybody, like the 50-30-20 rule, the zero-based budget, things like that sound good on paper but in application it can actually get pretty difficult so we're going to talk about this right now so the first thing that i want you all to keep in mind when you're making these adjustments and you're making your own personal financial plan the first thing to keep in mind is there is no one size fits all method there is no one thing that's the answer to all of your problems you can search through youtube looking for what's the answer What's the answer to make six figures a year? What's the answer to save $30,000 in my savings account? What's the answer to completely be debt free by the end of this year? There is no one specific answer that's gonna fit every single person watching this video. The truth is most of us, I would even go as far as to say all of us know what it is that we need to do. We just don't do it. Partially because in the back of our minds we know it's extremely difficult to do. And by the way, this includes me too. I've definitely been there and sometimes, even recently, I'll make a mistake. That happens. We're human, that's okay, that's perfectly normal. But you know what you need to do. Roughly, you have an idea of what you need to do. People even openly admit to what they need to be doing on a daily basis. They're like, man, I need to stop eating out at Chick-fil-A every day. Man, I need to stop buying all these unnecessary things. I need to do better, I'm messing up. You say little things like this because deep down you know what you need to be doing. The problem is, and this is the caveat and the argument to the whole thing that I would play devil's advocate with myself with, and it's basically to say this. When you start to do all that you know what you're supposed to be doing, Sometimes we run into stumbling blocks or obstacles that seem like they're almost impossible to pass. And that's where we need guidance and that's where I come into play. Before we get more into this video, if you haven't already hit the link below, sign up for my newsletter. You will get a weekly email from me giving you financial advice and it's 100% free. You don't gotta worry about nothing or anything like that. One thing I do have that's not free though, if you really want an in-depth look and you really want to learn how I got my mindset of thinking for yourself when it comes to your personal finances and more in-depth applicational ways to do better with your finances, check out my book. It's called The Wealth Journey. It came out last year. I'm extremely proud of it. Check it out if you haven't read it already. Link down below. You could pay $10 to get more mindset and to give you more ways to make more money, invest, and have a better future for yourself. That's for the ebook. If you're getting the paperback, it's gonna be $19. If you're getting the paperback, that's gonna run you about $20. If you get the hardcover, that's $30. So if you want to, check it out. Support your boy. Anyway, we're gonna jump back into the topic today. Now, this is just life through my eyes, but the way I see it is this. When it comes to your personal finances, you basically have two things. You have your bills and you have your goals. That's it. If you're someone who's living paycheck to paycheck, your bills are obviously your priority. You're getting those knocked out and you might find that you have zero dollars at the end of the month or you might have just low money like, I don't know, $20, $100 left in your bank account at the end of the month and you might feel like, well, I can't do nothing with this. So your goal might be to not live paycheck to paycheck. Maybe you want to have $500 left over at the end of the month or more. Whatever the number is in your head, that's your goal. So we have bills which are gonna take priority. A lot of us have our bills automated, and if you don't have your bills automated, I highly suggest you do that. Even if it's just one bill at a time, get used to it. It's gonna help you out tremendously, I promise that. But not everyone's comfortable to do that. So with that, we have the goals. Your goal might be to get your credit card paid off fully. Your goal might be to pay off your student loans. Your goal might be to save money. Your goal might be to start investing $100, $200 a month. Or you might have different goals. You might want to build up your emergency fund. You might want to start building up your children's college fund. Whatever the case is, you have your goals. And goals, I'm just going to let you in on something. Goals tend to be more expensive than your bills by far. So it's all about prioritizing your goals. 
I don't know you. I don't know your specific situation. I can give you a general idea of how I think about money, how I would go about it if it were my finances. You have to figure it out for yourself. I'll say this. I'll say this. If your debt isn't accumulating any interest right now, I would go for the debt that's accumulating interest. So for example, if you have credit card debt, let's say you have $2,000 credit card debt, right? And then you have $20,000 of student loans to pay off. Right now, your student loans ain't doing nothing. They're just sitting there stagnant. So you can afford to put more money and more energy towards your credit card debt. And if you have money left over, then you can put some of it into your student loan debt. That's how I would approach it personally. Because right now, student loans ain't gaining no interest. I don't think they start back collecting interest until like September, but who knows? They, they keep pushing it back and pushing it back. So you can really take advantage of that. And you can even build up a little account to put something towards your student loans. But you see what I'm saying? These are goals that I'm talking about. You have to figure out how you personally want to prioritize your financial goals. And so here's another example of prioritizing. You might have four different goals at once, but I'm giving you them in pairs of two just so you can get an idea of how to kind of prioritize what your goals are. So let's say you want to build your savings account up. It's, it's pretty low right now. You feel like you have $200 saved. That's good, but you want to get up to a thousand. Cool. But you also have $2,000 of credit card debt. Well, which one is going to hurt you more? The credit card that has been unresolved is definitely going to hurt you more. It's going to gain 17, 18, 19, 20% every single month. And even if you're paying the minimum payment, even if you're paying a little more, it's still going to grow a little bit. It's going to get to a point where the longer you take to pay it off, the more money you're going to actually spend on getting debt free, so to speak. And then you have your savings. So the way I would prioritize that, I would double down on my debt. Any extra money I have that month, any overtime I can get that month, any extra money I can get, whether it's like ad revenue from YouTube, I would be throwing it towards that debt. And then whatever money I can put toward my savings account, I will. But if you have two goals like that, it's best to hyper-focus on one, still tend to the other one, but you can't do them both at the same time unless you come across a lot of money. But in most people's cases, you're still dealing with the same income every month unless you're able to work overtime or do something to get you some extra money. So you just want to be smart with the extra money that you get. And then lastly, when it comes to say choosing between saving and investing, you want to get to a point where you're saving $200 a month and put it into your investing account versus getting your savings account from $200 to a thousand. You got to think about this. If you're investing, you probably don't want to put money in just to take it out when you need it. Even if it grows by a little bit, like your investment account can be up 27% and you can have $3,000 in the positive, which means if you take $3,000 out, that does not affect the principal that you put in at all. But to me, that's wasteful because investing is supposed to be long term. And I'll make a whole video about investing. I'm going to have a whole series for you and I have an investing course coming out. But in my opinion, that's it's wasteful to take money out of it just because you need it, especially taking that much out. So if your mindset is you want your investment account to grow and you don't want to touch it for 20 years, you got to think about the present as well. So I would prioritize mostly the savings account. And then when I can put extra money into my investing account, that's how I would do it. And then once my savings gets to where I want it to be, it could be a thousand, it could be two thousand, ten thousand. It doesn't, it's all up to you. But once it gets to where you want it to be, then you can be more aggressive about your investing goals because now you've freed up more money to do so. Maybe you're not putting in two hundred, three hundred dollars in your savings account. Maybe now you're putting in one hundred dollars and you can put the rest into your investing account. Those are just examples, but that's how I see it. You have your bills and you have your goals. Your bills, 1,000% come first. And if you remember back to my video about mastering saving money, I specifically say that one of your bills is going to be yourself. And that bill is the minimum, the absolute minimum amount that you want to save for that month. And if you have money left over extra at the end of the month to put in your savings, you'll throw that in there if that is one of your goals. Just wanted to give you that free game real quick. We're going to jump into the next tip. As you do step number two for a while, basically creating your budget around all those things that I just said, you're going to notice some things are off. You're going to notice some things need to be adjusted and tweaked. So you just adjust those things. And it can be stuff that's pretty simple that doesn't set you back 
too much, but you know, if you saved it, it might mean a world of difference to you. So for example, let's say you're spending, I don't know, 25 to $40 per month on a gym membership, but you find yourself going to the gym at your apartment complex more because they have basically everything that you need and it's obviously a lot closer, you might decide to cancel that gym membership. You might decide that you actually do have the exact amount of money you need to pay off your credit card debt this month. So you just go ahead and pay it off because you know it'll be less money if you do it right now than if you just waited and paid the minimum payment for the next five months. That's an adjustment and that's a decision based on right now and how it can impact your future. So if you do make decisions like that, you may feel it a little bit right now financially about, you might be like, man, I paid off my credit card debt and I can't really do nothing this month. Okay, but what about the next months to come? Now you freed up more things. So you just have to think critically about what's going on in your life and what you are able to do without obviously going in the zero or going into the negatives in your bank account. And at the end of every month, I want you to have a meeting with yourself. It could be a 10 minute meeting, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, however long you need. You ain't going to be sitting there like audibly talking to yourself or nothing unless you just want to. But it's mainly for you to look at how you've done. I think with anything you do in life, it's extremely important for you to look at where you're at versus where you want to be and what things can you work on to get toward that goal. So for example, I'm going to make this about me for a little bit. I just started getting back into martial arts. I'm doing Muay Thai now and Every time I leave a class, I've only been to two classes, but every time I leave a class, I make notes. Okay, what did we go over today? What did I feel that I was strong in? What did I feel that I was weak in? And what am I going to do in my spare time? Or what am I going to do when I hit the gym by myself to work on my form in these techniques? What am I going to think about from a combat standpoint? You get what I'm saying? So it's, life is like combat itself. There's always things being thrown at you. You don't always know how to defend yourself. You don't always know how to strike back. But when it comes to money, you better learn because ignorance ain't going to be an excuse. There's never going to be an excuse that's going to get you out of paying rent, paying your car note. So you got to think about how you're going to defend yourself against life essentially and how you're going to stay on top of it and basically stay ready so you don't have to get ready you get what i'm saying I i'm gonna get off my soapbox but i just wanted y'all to know that at the end of the day you answer to yourself so ask yourself the hard questions be honest with yourself and then make adjustments and you keep it moving and lastly and, and something else I want to add real quick. This is a bonus for those of y'all who are still here with me and you're still watching this video. I appreciate all of you. If you haven't already hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, but check this out. Don't sleep on your future goals. It's going to feel like just your immediate goals take a really long time to do, whether it's getting your savings account up to a certain amount or paying off a certain amount of debt or starting to invest or starting your child's college fund, something like, like whatever your goal is, putting a saving up to put a down payment on the house. There's so many things you can have goals for that I'm not even thinking of right now. But the point is, it's normal for things to move slow at first, but don't forget about your long-term goals too. If your short-term goal is to get your savings up to 1,000 and then your long-term goal is to get it up to 20,000, you gotta keep going. You have to stay consistent. Don't get into this mentality of, man, I'm never gonna get there. Man, I'm feeling sorry for myself because I'm not where I want to be yet. Don't get impatient now. Life is long. I don't know how long it is going to be for each individual person, but my point is we all have time to go toward our goals. And I just, I would feel like I'm disrespecting myself in a sense if I'm not fully committed to the goals that I have set out for myself. Does that make sense? I would feel like I have the time right now. I have the energy and the strength and the youth right now to go toward my goals. Why would I not do it? Why would I backpedal and just say, I'm just going to give up just because it's not moving as fast as I want it to. Time is going to go by anyway. So I would encourage every single person watching this video to really consider that and really think about that. You're going to be tested in life. Some things might set you back from your goal. Some things might happen uncontrollably that you can't do anything about. Someone in your family might die. You might have to pay for an expensive flight ticket to go all the way to a different state that actually happened to me and I didn't expect it. And obviously post pandemic, not really, but 
throughout this weird time with pandemics and diseases and things floating around, flight tickets have gotten a lot more expensive. So sometimes you have to put yourself in a position to have money left over just in case. You need to have a just in case fund, not an emergency fund, a just in case fund. Just in case I have to drop $1,000, $2,000, I'm gonna be okay. I'm not gonna be set back too much. But I say all that to say, you will be tested, you will be tried. Some things happen. It is what it is. What do you do about it though? As Mr. Mike Tyson said in one of his videos, I don't remember which one, but he was like, you're gonna be tested in life. And without a test, there is no testimony. I know I got deep for a second, but I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for your patience. I know it's been a while since I posted. I needed to take some time for me. You know what I'm saying? Mental health is very important. Physical health is very important. I took some time off to just relax and do absolutely nothing. Um, I kind of felt uncomfortable doing that at first, but it is truly paid off. And I'm amazed by how at peace I am with life right now. It's pretty awesome. Not that I wasn't before, but everybody needs a break every now and then is what I'm saying. Anyway, if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one with me, hit me up on my website. I do still have the one-on-one -on -one coaching. The free sessions are going away forever, or at least until the foreseeable future. Um, it's time to end that. If you do want to book a session, I will have the prices changed and everything. And um, I'm going to make sure it's definitely affordable. And if you want to book those sessions, they will be there for you waiting. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.